this time I'll call the Haywood County Board of Education meeting for October to order. This time I'd like to ask Mr. Jimmy Rogers if he'd lead us in our board prayer, immediately followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Board members, please rise for the invocation. Let's pray. Most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, again, we ask your loving arms to be wrapped around us, guide us and direct us. Lord, as we continue on a journey that is uh, still unknown, still questionable, still have concerns, Lord, we do pray that you continue to be with our teachers and our staff, all staff and all people, bus drivers, everyone, Lord, that's contributing to help educate children. Lord, we pray that you be with those who may be sick in some form or fashion, whether it be this pandemic or whatever's affecting them, health-wise, mental-wise, give us all stability, give us guidance. Lord, we know that you're the caretaker and you're the healer of all. And we do pray that you help us. Help this board as we make decisions, Lord. That helps educate these children. And thank you so much for the faith that these parents have and these educators have in the Haywood County School System, Lord. Haywood County citizens, this state, this nation, be with us all as we go throughout this. God and direct us in all that we do. And Lord, we will always give you the praise and the glory for it all. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Under announcements, um, our next regular board meeting will be held here at the Education Center at 7 o'clock on November the 9th, 7 p.m. Also, we have the North Carolina School Board Association Virtual Annual Conference is going to be held from November 5th through the 7th, and it will be virtual this year. And as we get details on registration and all, we'll make sure we communicate with you through uh, Ms. King. And... Uh, Later on in the agenda tonight, you'll notice that we are going to be electing, I think we need to elect four uh, voting delegates to the annual conference. I think that's what we've been doing in the past. I'd like to also announce that Ms. Barrett was not able to be here tonight. She suffered a back injury. She said that she's getting better, but she is going to rest tonight. Her back's hurting her pretty bad, so we're going to miss Ann tonight. So. Keep Ms. Barrett in your prayers. Any other announcements? I do know that there's one, I've been asked to add one item from Building and Grounds from Dr. Rogers. We'll add it uh, right after the, uh, right prior to the finance report from the financial community. And y'all have one to add as well. Okay, Finance Committee has one, and Building and Grounds will go in at right before 19, and um, item number 19, and then we'll do the additional item from the Finance Committee as well. Are there any objections to that additions at this time? Chairman, at this time, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the agenda as presented, as amended. As amended? Okay. We have a motion from Mr. Rogers to approve the agenda as uh, amended. Is there a second? Second. Second. Mr. Burnett, any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Next, we have uh, Mr. Hines for some uh, recognition.
Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Nolte, and special guests, we have uh, a great event tonight that we have not been able to do in a while and do some recognitions. We have two special guests with us tonight. Uh, it's my privilege to get to introduce one of them and talk about it a little bit, and Jenny uh, Wood will introduce the other, and uh, we're going to hand them some certificates and brag on them. Uh, this year, uh, for the second year, the NCAT uh, over at uh, Cullowee has uh, uh, put on a beginning teacher of the year uh, program. And uh, each county is asked to select a beginning teacher of the year. And they can go on to the regional and then on to the state level and possibly become a state beginning teacher of the year. And so we're, we're very excited about that. As you know, it's very difficult to be a beginning teacher, much less in the circumstances that they've had this year. And we're very proud of both of these teachers. Uh, when I called her principal and said, uh, one of your teachers has one beginning teacher of the year for Haywood County, he was very excited. And of course, and I said, go down and let her know. And he said, well, can I come to the meeting and talk about her? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to let Graham Haynes come up and introduce his beginning teacher of the year uh, for Haywood County Schools. And then afterwards, if we can have a, another minute, we want Miss Chadwick uh, to brag on her a little bit, too, and talk about the process of how they selected them. So, Mr. Haynes. Saw Miss Chadwick's face when he said she was going to talk, and she did this. <laughs> I asked, "Did you know you're going to do that?" Mm -mm. <laughs> um, Chairman Francis, members of the board, um, <clears throat> first of all, I just want to say thank you to you all uh, for everything you do. It has uh, it, it has been a difficult beginning of the year, <laughs> and uh, and I know that you all have had to deal with a lot and make some tough decisions, and we appreciate that very much. Um, Dr. Nolte, Dr. Putnam, Ms. Barker, um, thank you all also for your wisdom and guidance and, all, and putting in the extra time and doing everything that you all do. Um, Haywood County Schools wouldn't be where it is statewide right now and as stable as what I feel like it is um, going through all this without you all, so thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I'm here tonight to introduce a great beginning teacher. Um, she hasn't been teaching long. But she is a great teacher. Um, you can see it in the curriculum and what she does in her classroom. You can see it the way she uh, collaborates with her peers and talks with them. They learn from her. She learns from them. Um, you can see it how she communicates with parents and uh, talks with them and gets them to be on the same page with their child's learning. But most importantly, you can see it in how she builds relationships with kids. Um, for teachers, that's the thing. It's building relationships. If you can build a relationship, you, a relationship, you can change a classroom. And um, something that came to mind um, when I heard that she got this, um, last Monday I was walking between B and C building, and of course, as you all know, we've had to go through some changes schedule-wise, going from remote to blended, and so some kids' schedules have changed. Um, this teacher, she's actually stayed all remote. She teaches science and social studies, and it was kind of a necessity and essential for her to stay there. She could do two classes um, for those kids, you know, being dual certified. And so, um, needless to say, she gained some kids, but she lost some kids. And so, I noticed as I'm walking through the courtyard there, and the kids are all spaced out and they're eating, um, and she's just out there talking to them. And I didn't think much of it at the time. Um, but later it kind of clicked with me. She was out there talking to those kids and those were the kids that she'd started the year with or at least a good handful of them. And so she was out there talking with them and building that relationship with them and giving those kids another person to be able to talk to and relate to and to go to on the hallway. So not only do they have their team in eighth grade, but they've still got her too. Um, and I just thought that was really powerful and awesome because she was taking time out of her day to do that. And that's exactly what we want from Haywood County Schools and from Waynesville Middle School. Um, so without continuing, um, I would like to introduce the Haywood County Schools Beginning Teacher of the Year, Miss Salem Paris.
Sure. <laughs> hey everyone, thank you so much. Um, I want to say thank you to Haywood County Schools for selecting me as the beginning teacher of the year. I picture myself last year this time think of the anxiety I had as a first year teacher also teaching two subjects, moving three hours away from home. <laughs> Um, fresh out of college, I was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Never did I imagine, especially after the craziness of this first year, to receive this honor. I first fell in love with Waynesville Middle as a student teacher. The report I received the support I received from my cooperating teacher and my university supervisor and all over the school helped mold me into the teacher I am. I knew I had to take a chance and apply for a position, even if that meant taking on another subject. The love and support I received from Haywood County Schools has constantly made me feel as if I'm exactly where I should be. My plan was to move back to Ashboro, where the zoo's at. <laughs> um, but standing here before you today, thank God some plans don't work out. I am thankful for the students who were put in my path. May they know they are loved. My family for the constant support and the friends I've made along the way. I couldn't have done it without you. I cannot thank this county enough for taking me in, supporting me, and always pushing me to be better. I will forever be grateful for this little mountain town and all of you. Thank you. Thank you. NCAT started this program last year, and it is a statewide program. And in Haywood County, as you know, we have, I have the, a, I work with the A team. We have a superb group of liaison and coaches who work with our beginning teachers. And so they're in their classrooms weekly. They work with them very, very closely. And so at the end of the year, um, the liaisons nominate one beginning teacher in elementary, one in middle, and one in high. And then we have a, a committee that makes the decision based on information that these candidates submit. They have to answer some questions and they have to talk about themselves as teachers and they have to provide some references. Um, and it's just, it's an amazing program and, it's, and we just have such wonderful, wonderful, wonderful beginning teachers. And, I think I said one time before, you all know that saying about it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes a village to support a beginning teacher, and you're part of that village. And I'm just so, so grateful to each and every one of you and to Mr. Hines and to Dr. Nolte and the, and the staff at the central office for all that they do to provide such wonderful support. Because we have the best teachers and we have the best beginning teachers too. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chapman. Congratulations, Ms. Paris. Congratulations, Ms. Paris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We got me in turn, Mr. Chairman. I'd also like to say thank you to Ms. Chadwick because you, you've helped a lot of these new beginning teachers over the years and, and all the years that you taught as well. So thank you for what you do. <laughs> no, no. You're younger than I am. No, just <laughs> All right. Next on our agenda is I think Dr. Nolte is going to start us out with Miss Miss Wood. I think Miss Wood will uh, join us. I think she's going to log in and talk, and I'm going to pass out uh, certificates and plaques. If that doesn't work, I'll do both. All right. Good evening, and friends, members of the. It's my pleasure tonight to be able to recognize our Teacher of the Year for the county. Um, the beginning teachers turn into these great career teachers that um, we get to recognize at each school. So I want to I want to first, because we weren't able to do a luncheon this year, I want to publicly read the names of each Teacher of the Year at each school. At Bethel Elementary, Meredith Allen. At Bethel Middle School, Crystal McCracken. Canton Middle School, Sarah Lee. Central Haywood, Heather Bell. Clyde Elementary, Carrie Mathis. Haywood Early College, Beth Hooper. Hazelwood Elementary School, Beth Rogers. Jonathan Valley, Nicole Dale. June Alaska, Ira Hyde. Meadowbrook, Kristen Stiles. 
North Canton, Courtney Kleiner, Kisga, Rhonda Wester, Riverbend, Maggie King, Tescola, Megan Watts, and Waynesville Middle, Amanda Wells. And all 16, 15 of these um, teachers were phenomenal in their portfolio and in their interview. The committee um, just ran it and raved about how great these teachers were. And it was a really close in the scoring, probably the closest that it's been since I've been doing this. But um, we do have two runner-ups and the middle school runner-up is Crystal McCracken from Bethel. And then our elementary middle, our elementary runner-up is Kristen Stiles from Meadowbrook. So we're very proud of those two. Um, the Haywood County Schools Teacher of the Year is a three-time school recipient. So she has been nominated by her peers at Canton Middle and Pisgah. And um, that's like Jason said about when he called Graham, when I called Clint to let him know that Ms. Wester was the Haywood County Schools Teacher of the Year. He was, he didn't say enough about how well deserved that was so my pleasure to recognize Rhonda Wester as the Haywood County Schools Teacher of the Year. Chairman Francis, the board, thank you so much for this recognition. Um, I'm blessed. Um, I started my career here 21 years ago. I was a student teacher from Western Carolina, and Buddy Chandler took a chance on me. He hired me. Um, I was teach the student teacher full long year that year. He hired me in April, um, and I had to come back and teach. I taught at Tuscola for almost 10, and then went to Camp Middle and now I'm at Pisgah. So I've been very blessed. I've been in both high schools, and they're both phenomenal. Um, and I just want to thank y'all for this opportunity. Um, and thank you for all you do for supporting us and supporting our children. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now I would like to go ahead and recognize our principal of the year. And um, again, he has made a career out of being in Haywood County. I think that's kind of the theme for tonight, not not um, being from here, but decided to stay. He was an assistant principal at Fisgah, and he's been a principal at North Canton, Canton Middle, Waynesville Middle, and is now the grant coordinator at Central Haywood. We are pleased to announce the Haywood County Schools Principal of the Year, Mr. Todd Barbie. I, uh, I got my iPad so I can make it big because my, my glasses fog up, so please bear with me. Uh, Dr. Nolte, Chairman Francis, board members, um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and just humbled by this uh, honor bestowed on me um, by my fellow administrators. Um, I would have never dreamed of doing this, uh, never dreamed of being here. Uh, a couple years ago, a long time ago, I attended my 15th high school reunion slash picnic and North Stanley, we always brought our administrators, our principals with us. Well, uh, Mr. Danny Massey, our principal was there. And Danny Massey, when he found out I was an assistant principal at Pisgah, he horse laughed me and said, I hope you've got a whole bunch of Todd Barbies to run you ragged. Uh, and uh, I said, no, sir. I said, I'm blessed to be where I am. And, uh, and that's the truth. Um, I owe a great debt of gratitude to the teachers and staff at Pisgah High School, North Canton Elementary, Canton Middle, Waynesville Middle, and now Central Haywood High School. Uh, each day I'm overwhelmed by the job that they do with our, with our students. Um, they not only serve as their teachers, but they're their role models. Uh, nurses, counselors, and sometimes the only adult who provides attention, nurturing, and hugs, except not right now. Um, I want to thank my wife, Erin, um, and our four kids who have put up with uh, many long hours with me not being home, um, listening to me drill on and on about stuff that she really doesn't care about, about issues in education, uh, late night phone calls, being woken up, uh, emergencies, and for taking up the slack in our family when I couldn't be home. 
You know, I heard a long time ago that educators are the world's best thieves. Um, we see something that another educator or a principal do, is doing, and we take it and uh, mold it so that it fits our personality. And I've had the opportunity to cut my teeth in school administration by being mentored, either formally or informally, by a great group of administrators. Uh, Mr. Danny Miller at Pisgah, uh, along with Heather Hollingsworth, Mark Shepard, and Sean Paris. Uh, Jill Barker was my first official mentor, and uh, she educated me, educated this middle school teacher and high school assistant principal all about the world of elementary kids. Uh, so I do appreciate that. I know uh, I was a tough study. Um, Dr. Putnam was there in a time of personal need, and I greatly appreciate that. And he made the transition from Canton Middle across the county line to Wangsville Middle very, very, uh, very, very easy. Um, and Dr. Nolte, um, I just appreciate you the way that you understand that you have two ears and one mouth, and and sometimes it is better to listen than to talk, and oftentimes that is all that someone needs. Um, and again, Mr. Jeff Haney, uh, who I would always call on when I had an ethical dilemma. Um, Haywood County has, is a wealth of talent, both in the classroom and in the administrative offices, in, the, in our cafeterias, bus drivers, clerical, it doesn't matter what they do. We're just a wealth of talent. And I am lucky to be part of such a great group of people. You know, and although my current title doesn't have principal with it, um, I hope to be back in the seat someday uh, serving uh, our, our children, serving this board, and serving uh, the future of Haywood County. And I do I thank you so much for your time. Congratulations, Mr. Barbie. Congratulations. For the record, Mr. Francis, I'm not running them off. I'm getting their picture made. But I figured out what was going on. <laughs> we're doing socially distanced pictures. Very good. Uh, running them off. Thank you for coming, Ms. Barbie. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next on our agenda, we have Dr. Putnam. I hate Miss Chadwick made it out of here before I could reach the microphone. But uh, that lady has a crown waiting on her in heaven because she had to put up with an old, rough, tumbly boy like me. So, uh, But she's a good one. Who else better to mentor our teachers? Um, I'm here uh, to recognize two of our um, transportation folks as a result of a pay structure uh, that this board uh, approved, we have two that have completed uh, steps in certifications, in the way of certifications, to become eligible for additional pay. Um, they are not here. I ask them. Dr. Nolte is my witness. They're the humble, hardworking sort. So they said we respectfully decline uh, to attend. So. Um, you know, there's there's plow horses and there's show horses, and they're a plow horse, so, and I understand and appreciate that. First, I'd like to recognize Kenneth West Bradley. Um, he uh, received his 30-day school bus inspector certification. That greatly helps our school, making sure they're current and that the inspections are current, and um, saves, us, saves us some money, so, um, and they will move up a step or uh, move into a uh, certification category which increases their pay. Also we have uh, Dustin Sellers. He has also achieved his 30-day school bus inspector certification. Uh, both of these gentlemen will move from mechanic one to mechanic two. So just wanted to recognize them whether they wanted to show up or not. We're awfully proud of them and uh, thank you board for approving that pay structure that incentivizes our folks to get additional certifications that keep our school buses extra safe and also give our folks a chance for advancement. So thank you. Congratulations to both of them, Dr. Putnam. Next we have Ms. Barker for a reopening of the school's update. I get hung on my earring sorry I guess y'all don't have that problem but 
um, Chairman Francis and members of the board. So we gave a brief update at the work session, but I just want to talk to you a little bit about reopening in person. Um, we did, um, we'll start with elementary. Um, we're beginning our second week of face-to-face -face instruction with them. And each elementary school has dedicated staff for remote instruction. And last week was like the first week of school. Um, we we're continuing to analyze and improve our systems. And, you know, there were a lot of glitches and things to work out, but we feel really good about that and things have definitely smoothed out. The principals and teachers, so it was good to hear laughter and music back in the building. I think the big thing is just this is a thank you to the schools and all their staff for the tremendous amount of work that they have put into this transition. Um, we know in our office, we talk about it at least once every 15 minutes, how stressful it has been for our staff and how it's not been easy since March 15th. So just to publicly again, thank everyone out there in the schools. We see you, we know it's hard, but as one principal told me last week, our kids need us now more than ever, and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do it the best of our ability because they need us. So y'all continue to amaze us out there. Um, secondary, this now we're in our second, um, they've had an A week and a B week. We're back into A week, our second rotations. The transitions in the high schools and the middle schools were relatively smooth. Again, just working out um, pieces of a puzzle that we had never done before. So um, we're continuing to work on that but you know the balancing um, in-person and remote instruction is challenging to say the least and just again for our secondary teachers and staffs out there thank you for being flexible and adaptable in this situation so these um up top are i guess you can see here behind us these are the most current remote and in-person numbers we have any questions for me just regarding instruction or returning to school that's about what the survey said it was about very close the survey, yes and we called today and just tried to those are pretty accurate so it's up today i'll be glad to let brick email it to you too if you want to so today um Friday was the 10th day for our secondary schools, and so most, most of the changes and the parents that had wanted to change had communicated, most of the principals said that had died down some, but they're still, if the, the parents out there listening, if they have a situation, we just encourage them to call and talk to the principal. And then this starts the second week for elementary, so. So we're looking at, is this thing on you? Yeah. We're looking at 60, 67, 13 total between remote and in-person? Yes. So that sounds sort of... It's 29 kids off our um, PMR1, and we tried to, to account for those 29 kids. We've had some kids withdraw, um, move out. Brooke and I were looking at mm -hmm. that today. So that total almost captures every student, student 29 kids from our... And that, that data was pulled on September 15th for our PMR1, so that's even changed since then. That was as of today. As of today, okay. So I thought that was... I looked at that too. Just want to make sure... Yeah, I was just accurate. looking at I me. Mean, I, I didn't know where it was set, but you're saying 29, so that's... That, that total number, and I have it over there, but it's 29 kids different than from the first... PMR, PMR, that was gathered on September 15th. 15th right. okay. So there's 29 kids somewhere. And again, that could be what's happened awesome. between now and then. I hope we found some. We found some too, so. Any other questions for me? Very good. I did want to clarify, Monday is our first of five scheduled remote learning work days that the state required us to put into our calendar this year. So just to clarify that, on Monday, and that's the 19th, this will be the first one. There's there's four more after Monday. It's an optional teacher work day. Um, students, um, if teachers are working, you know, they'll report to the building. If they choose not to work, they'll take accumulated leave. And I had sent this out to principals today as a reminder, just to let their staffs know. So on that day, students can um, review, they can have reading assignments and any kind of practice that teachers would want to assign, but they will have some things that they can complete on that day, but the teacher, they will not have the synchronous instruction 
on those days. And so they, and the way our attendance this year is, I may be getting too deep in the weeds, but they're counted present on site automatically. So if the teachers, if the kids weren't to turn in something, they could be counted absent later. So they will know before they leave what their assignments are for Monday. That's correct. Any questions? Already I just want to remind everybody about those are new and different for us this year. So that you are saying that Monday, the kids, like a high school, they will not have to log into like a Google Meet. They will not have synchronous on Monday. Right. Okay, because and there will be some teachers working that might would want to do that, but there will be some teachers not. So we want for consistency purposes just to okay. to make that even across the board. That any other questions? I would just I would just say the, these are five days that the general assembly added to the calendar. Uh, uh, really, before we had a lot of effects of uh, COVID, and um, they uh, wanted us, I think, to prepare to have those days. And little did we know we would have a bunch of them. But they are designed to be front loaded. Uh, to give flexibility to families if they want to have their traditional longer weekend in the fall and um, teachers would certainly be required to provide uh, things for students to do on the front end that day but we also wanted to uh, support our teachers and give them a little bit of flexibility in that they could work that day or take accumulated leave okay thank you again for your support board in our schools and for our staffs out there for all their hard work once again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Barker, for the update. Ms. King, is anyone signed up to address the board in person this evening? Okay, thank you. No one has signed up. Next on our agenda is our minutes. Somebody like to make a motion to approve them. <laughs> Okay, Dr. Rogers made a motion to approve the minutes as presented, the regular and closed session minutes, and the special call open session minutes. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Mr. Francis seconded it. Thank you for raising your hand. I didn't catch it where it was coming from. Any discussion or questions on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Now, is Ms. Wood coming back in remotely? Hello again, Ms. Wood. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> All right, you're next. Okie doke. So, um, as we talked about in the work session on Thursday night, I just wanted to provide a little bit more public information about the service agreement that we are entering into with Franklin Covey to do um, unconscious bias training district-wide. This will begin on January the 26th and it will um, start from the board and then um, go into the administrators, principals, and then into the training will be provided for teachers and schools. So um, if, if you have any questions about that, just let me know, but I just wanted to provide a little bit of information for the public about that service agreement. Okay. Any questions from the board members on that? Did you say the 26th of January or the 27th? Um, the, the first two days are the 26th and the 27th, and we will start on the 26th. Yeah, with I one just, full I day in person it. beginning with the board. It says 27th. Yeah, the agreement says the 27th, Ms. Wood. That's what we're just looking at. It, it probably did because um, we I had to email him again this morning. All right, so 26th and the 27th, and the we agree to 26th. Okay. Yeah, you told me Tuesday, right? The 26th. And the but that was correct. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Jeannie. Next, we have uh, Brandy Stevenson. I assume she's coming in remote as well. Brandy. My on there? No, you are, Miss Brandy. Okay. Chairman Francis, members of the board, Dr. Nolte and staff, tonight I bring to you a contract for your approval. 
As you know, we have hired a licensed clinical social worker to provide and help us coordinate mental health services in our district, um, much needed mental health services um, to our students. And she needs supervision in order to obtain um, the appropriate licensure in order to provide those services. So we're asking for your approval tonight for that. Okay, this time I entertain a motion. We approve the contract as presented. Make a motion to approve. Mr. Henson made the motion and seconded by Mr. Clark. Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stevenson. Sure. Next, we have Dr. Putnam on the way to the podium. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I would like to uh, put for, uh, for your consideration application for North Carolina Education Lottery Funds uh, for the payment of to be applied to debt service for the Pisgah High School classroom addition, in the amount of $182,792.50. Following this payment, we'll have three additional payments left. Um, project completion payoff, uh, December of 2023. Uh, the total remaining balance beyond this payment is a little over 530,000. We're whittling it down. Goodness. Yes, sir. But it was a much needed addition at Pisgah for sure. Yes. This time we need a motion to approve this application. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rogers made a motion. I hear a second. A second. Say, so, Mr. Francis, any questions, uh, comments on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Dr. Putnam. Thank you. Mr. Hines is next. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, for your considerations, number 16. Uh, we had the beginning teacher support plan approved earlier in the year, uh, back in August, I believe it was plan has not changed. Uh, the state legislature requires that beginning teachers and their principals uh, in their first and second year of employment fill out a survey created by the state that the state uses to evaluate their teacher preparation program at the university where they went or where they graduated from. Uh, the legislature had not uh, had much success in getting those uh, surveys filled out and so they have made it a requirement in our plan now and they they require us to insert that language that survey must be completed before the beginning teacher can be signed off to go on to the next year of the beginning teacher program so we just made that adjustment to the plan if you will approve that we appreciate it Mr. Right. Chairman I'll make a motion we approve the beginning teacher support plan as presented Okay, Mr. Rogers made a motion. I hear a second. Second of Mr. Clark. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Next on our agenda, board members, we have the opportunity to uh, represent Haywood County Schools and this board at the North Carolina School Board Association uh, annual conference. I'm not exactly sure when the legislative body will get back together as far as the school board association goes, but uh, I'm sure we'll get information as we go, but we need to have four people that would be willing to serve um, as voting delegates to that uh, body. Does anybody want to volunteer? I will. Mr. Francis, Mr. Burnett, Mr. Rogers. And Larry Hinton. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dr. Rogers, you want to do it? Okay. You've, you've heard the people see Mr. Francis, Mr. Burnett, Mr. Rogers, and Dr. Rogers. Um, I need a motion to that effect. That, okay, Mr. Clark's made the motion that those folks be uh, represent us at the uh, School Board Association Delegate Assembly. Uh, do I hear a second? I'll second. 
Second, Mr. Henson, any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries nicely, and thank you to those that have volunteered to serve. Next, we have Dr. Putnam with a whole bunch of policies. Mr. Kirkpatrick's uh, request, I'm going to read through all 21 verbatim. I make a motion we approve of policies <laughs> that are placed in front of us for second reading. <laughs> we looked over them last month and had one whole month to do it. <laughs> there needs to be some discussion here, don't we? Uh, no, I've already made a motion. You can discuss it later. <laughs> <laughs> he is correct in that it's been, this is the second read they've been placed up for. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Kirkpatrick. I hear second. Second. Second with Dr. Rogers. Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? Now you can read them all, Dr. Putnam. <laughs> okay. It's a part of time. No, I'm just <laughs> oh, no, good. We have had a chance to study them and look at them for a good while, so we'll carry on. Any other discussion or comments? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's about as fast as I've ever seen policies changed. <laughs> motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Dr. Putnam. Thank you. Now we have a agenda item from the Building and Grounds Committee. Mr. Chairman, uh, Building and Grounds needs to declare the father, following items surplus. We have an upright incorporated 31 foot uh, single man vertical hydraulic lift. Uh, vehicle number 8032, which is a 2002 Ford Windstar minivan. We also have another vehicle, 8405, 2005 Ford Taurus, and a mower, a John Deere 22 horsepower uh, mower, model F935. All four items need to be declared surplus. Okay, and that's in the form of a motion from the Building and Grounds from Dr. Rogers. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, Mr. Burnett. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anything else? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for the work from the Building and Grounds Committee. And when you said Windstar, I knew we was talking history. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. I, I looked at Dr. Button and I said, Windstar? <laughs> That dates us. I'm sorry. <laughs> Next, we have our finance committee chair, Mr. Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, tonight, earlier tonight, the finance committee reviewed the monthly financial reports, and they all look good. And I'd like to bring them for a motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Clark to hear a second. Second. Said Mr. Kirkpatrick, any questions or discussion on the motion? That's Mr. Hanson. Okay, I didn't hear it. Sorry, Mr. Hanson. Make sure Ms. Brooks got that correct. Okay. We have a motion on the floor from Mr. Kirkpatrick, seconded by Mr. Hanson. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? You still did that. No, that was Mr. Clark and then Mr. <laughs> Mr. Hanson. Clark and Mr. Hanson. I'm sorry. I promise. <laughs> I'm not on pain medication, I promise. <laughs> we moved through the policy so fast it put my head spinning. <laughs> we have a motion from Mr. Clark and a second from Mr. Henson to approve the regular monthly financial reports. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Whew, that was a lot of work. Anything else from the Finance Committee? Yes, sir, two more. Okay. Um, also, um, we need to, um, i see if I can say this right, payment, Envision Payment Solution, which will be a company that will um, collect payment for our non-sufficient fund checks, and it will be at no cost to us. They will charge a $25 fee or whatever their fee is to the person that owes us money and they will collect the money. And Nathan, do you have anything you want to add to that or anything? No, they, they'll just, they're replacing who um, we had 
You'll need to come up to the microphone. I'm sorry. Or a microphone. Please. Uh, they'll just be replacing who we had that stops our service on August the 30th, who was next check. So this is the company that we'd like to replace them with. Yes, sir, Mr. Smathers. Mr. Chairman, don't change what that contract is. There's a provision in there that is governed by the law of Georgia that needs to be changed to North Carolina before it's signed. Okay, Mr. Smathers pointed out in his commentary that the contract currently states Georgia, but it needs to be changed to North Carolina, and that'll be changed before anybody signs a contract, okay? So just make note of that as well. Okay. Second that motion. So Mr. Clark's made the motion, and we have a second from Mr. Rogers. Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Got one more item. Um, we had a budget resolution amendment, and it's actually only a wording. It's no numbers or anything. Um, we just need to approve that. I forgot what it was, though. Do you want to say? <laughs> wording change on the budget amendment that yeah. we already previously passed, correct? Right, it's just two, two or three words. Two on. words. Yeah. It, it had the uh, state on. instead of the county on there, fund, yeah. out of fund four. So we just yeah. need to change okay. that. Yeah, that's right. Okay, we have a motion to uh, approve the budget amendment as amended from Mr. Cart. I hear a second. I'll second. Mr. Francis seconded. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Anything else from finance? No, sir, that's all. Thank you. Thank you for the hard work of the Finance Committee and Mr. Clark. I appreciate your chairmanship there. Yeah. Next is Dr. Nolte for personnel. Uh, Mr. Francis, I, um, I'm, this is a little unusual, but we've had um, a, a, a timely announcement of a student with COVID, and uh, we failed to ask whether or not you would let us uh, describe to the community how we would do that now that we've had one. So I don't know if the the board would indulge myself and is there any objection I don't Dr. Putnam for just a moment to to do that yes no, sir make a motion we just that agenda okay it needs to be done we have a motion to amend the agenda so we can add it I hear a second second, second by Mr. Rogers a motion from Dr. Rogers and second by Mr. Rogers any question or discussion on the motion on the floor there being none we'll vote all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed Motion carries an answer. So carry on. Yeah, I apologize in advance right. for doing that. Uh, we were uh, uh, we were notified on uh, late Friday afternoon that we had our first in-person student that had a positive test for COVID-19. So uh, we just wanted to say uh, in a public meeting the notification process for that. There are two parts. I'll ask Dr. Putnam to, to come on up and he can do the second part. But what we have agreed to uh, for qu quite some time ago with public health is that they would notify us when there's a positive. They would give the parent an opportunity to do that first, but they would definitely notify us. And then we would promptly notify the parents of the school about the grade level in which the positive occurred. Okay, uh, We can't be more specific than that because we do not want to violate HIPAA or FERPA regulations. So we did announce uh, pretty quickly on a Friday uh, afternoon uh, that we had had a positive case at uh, Jonathan Valley. Uh, we know that this will be very uh, a, of a lot of interest in the community. Uh, the uh, remainder of the announcement is that if anyone else is considered a close contact by the uh, public health officials and they will be contacted by public health officials so the contract trace contact tracing will be done by public health and then following the announcement I will be available to answer questions from the media and then Dr. Putnam will, will very quickly share with you how we uh, intend to have a pretty comprehensive report of cases over time so I'll 
let Dr. Putnam do that. Thank you again, board, for allowing that. All right, thank you. So as Dr. Nolte uh, said, individuals will be notified by the affected schools via Reminder Connect 5. So that school's going to know pretty readily just as soon as we have a confirmed case. So uh, we also thought that others might like to know what's going on at all of our schools. And so we've created a dashboard uh, hot off the press today. And Kim Jackson is scrambling around. She's going to be able to show it to you since I just asked her, could she show it to you? We literally just got this placed on our website today. And you can see that um, she has it up there and this is accessible from our website. And you'll see that we have one recorded case uh, from um, Jonathan Valley Elementary and we'll be placing those up there um, as we go along, as we get confirmed cases. So it's, it's kind of a, a, a record of what's going on at all of our schools in Haywood County. Any questions about the dashboard? That's good. Got a lot of information there. I wish I could take credit for it, but Back to Kim Jackson. <laughs> Kim Jackson done a fantastic job. Good job, Miss Kim. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Putnam. I think that helps eliminate a lot of questions that yeah. public has asked about, and that's, that's wonderful, so thank you. Thank you for allowing that board. Just, again, you know, we try to tell people a lot of things, so yes. just trying to be as transparent as we reasonably can. Again, thanks for letting us do that. Uh, board, at this time, I would present to you the uh, personnel that was discussed previously in closed session. Uh, personnel for your information, uh, separation from employment, nine, employee status change, uh, 34, leave of absence, eight, and then personnel for your approval, Employment 11, employee status change 108, <clears throat> leave of absence 4, substitutes 1, <coughs> employee coaches 24, non employee coaches 10, and volunteer services 4. Employee coaches, just, how many numbers do you have? Yeah. 24 or 29? I, I have 29. Yes, I actually have the number written down there, but I cannot read because my glasses are not on. But yes, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Fogs. Okay, you guys are really good at catching me on that kind of stuff. 29, yes, sir. 29. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that the personnel be approved as presented. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Rogers to hear a second. <clears throat> second. Mr. Burnett has seconded motion. Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? <coughs> there being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman, at uh, this time I would like to uh, introduce our acting <laughs> finance officer. I hope everyone will keep uh, their thoughts and prayers with Leanna Moody and Mike and the family. Leanna is our finance officer. Uh, she is still on our payroll. And uh, so what we have done in talking to lots of people and uh, looking at the department to make sure that we run uh, really well over time until Leanna can return and uh, seeking advice from the state business offices with uh, your approval of personnel. We are naming Nathan Haas as our, as our acting finance officer. Nathan, we appreciate your willingness to do that, and we just want to recognize you tonight, and if you'd like to say something, we'll turn the mic over to you. Be good. Dr. Nolte, Mr. Chairman, board members, I want to thank you for your confidence in and support for the finance department. We have faced several challenges over the past few months, including most of the staff being new just within a few months. COVID-19, the ransomware hack, moving offices, and our year in audit, 
And now, Leanne, our friend, and leader being temporarily absent. Amen. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's okay. It has been a difficult and emotional journey. However, just as our office has risen up to the challenge in the past, we will do the same now. We have a great finance team, and I'm confident that we will make you proud in the coming months. Thank you again for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Again, do remember Leanna in your prayers. Chuck, I'd like to say, Nathan, thank you for stepping up and thank you for doing a great job. As a chair of the Finance Committee, uh, you have done a great job providing us all the information. Easy to read, and uh, I just thank you. I know we all feel the same way. So. Amen. Okay, if there's nothing else to come before the board, 